Thank you, Mr. Prep fam. I hope everyone is doing well and you're staying safe. Um, today, I just wanted to show us some small space soccer activities that we can do while we are on our little break. So, the activities that we can do can include the three techniques that we worked on during our soccer unit, which can include dribbling, passing, and juggling. So we can work on all three of those in a small space. So if you don't have any cones, um, you can always just simply dribble around your small area that you have designated for your activity. Um, of course, you can use shirts, wine bottles if need be, but a simple way to practice our dribbling would to be in your small space and either go in to end and turn using that small part of the inside of your foot, keeping the ball close and continue to go back and forth. Then you can change it up and simply go around the borders, keeping the ball close, changing directions, making sure you keep the ball close. That's the key. So if you want to add a little bit of difficulty, all you need is to find uh, some sort of obstacle, whether it be cones, or like I said in the previous video, old clothes, water bottles, whatever you can have. But having a little obstacle course to dribble through could be a fun way to practice our dribbling skills, making sure we take those small touches through the cones. We don't want to kick the ball too far. We're going to keep it close, and then we can go around. And we can go back through the cones. This should be a very familiar part. We want to make sure we don't kick the ball too far away. We want to use that inside of our foot to help guide the ball around the cones. So the last dribbling activity for today uh, is going to be the most challenging, but it can really help you to improve your dribbling technique. So what we have set up are three cones in front, and one cone to serve as the back. So in this activity, all you want to do is choose a cone, dribble out to it, and then try, whether you knock or not, back up to the cone you start on. Then you can go out to the next cone, touch it, and drag it back. Then dribble out to the next, and drag it back. Drag it, drag it back. And you can keep working on that, um, if you have a, uh, a parent you want to try it with, or a sibling, you can try all these drills and time yourself and see if you can do whatever combination fastest. Um, just be creative with these activities and you can have a lot of fun. So now that we've worked on dribbling, we can move on and work on passing. Now, for a small space activity, um, all you need is something you bounce it off of. Luckily, I have a wall. Maybe you can use a trash can or anything. Just be creative, something that you can bounce the ball off of. So, the main thing to remember when you're passing off the wall is to hit it with the correct part of the foot. Remember, you want to point with your plant foot towards your target. Then you want to hit with the middle inside of your foot towards your target. When the ball comes back, you want to receive it with the inside of that foot, and you can pass again with the other foot. And then, you can pass as much as you want. If you have a sibling or a parent that wants to play with you, you can play a sort of wall ball variant, or you can just work by yourself. Now that we've done our dribbling and passing, we can also look at potentially working on our soccer juggling skills. So this is a hard technique that takes a lot of work. So I'm gonna actually have three steps for us to try. Um, once you pass step one, you can try step two and then step three. So step one would simply be dropping the ball, letting it hit the ground, and then kicking it back up for you to catch it. So I'll show you now. Drop, kick, catch. Drop, kick, catch. Drop, kick, catch. Drop, kick, catch. Woo. Try to keep that ball 
to, uh, on the top of your foot, coming straight up to land right in your hands. So, step two for juggling, which is a little bit harder, would be to drop the ball, let it hit the ground, kick up, do not touch the ball, let it come back down, hit the ground. So, I'm going to show you. Drop, kick, drop, kick, drop, kick, drop, kick, drop, kick, kick, The important thing for that step is to try and make sure you kick the ball straight up and let it land so you can get back under the ball. Step three is the hardest of it all, which is just normal juggling. You're not going to let it hit the ground at all anymore. So, you can get it started however you want, but once you start, you're going to try and keep that ball in the air for as long as you can. And to see how long you can do it, you can count how many you get. Um, and if you get really good at that, you can even bring your partner in and try to juggle and pass at the same time which is a really difficult task, but something that's really fun to try and do. I hope you enjoy these small soccer activities indoors, or outdoors if you have the space, and I hope to see you soon.